Lord, we thank you that we can be here together today. We thank you for this new year that you've blessed us with. And Father, we pray that as we go about our, our year, that we as um, our COLA United Methodist Church will, um, will be very aware of your presence guiding us and leading us so that we always stay faithful in following you. Be with us this morning and guide us in our, our prayers, in our songs, in our uncovering of your word. And Lord, know the, the love that we bring for not only one another, but for you. 
We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, We have one more candle to light. We did not get to light it on Christmas Eve, so we're going to light it this morning. If you will help with the uh, liturgy as usual, I would appreciate it. Um, You guys have the easy part, so I think you can do this. In our own lives, In our neighborhoods, in our families, we We need the page turned. (laughs) In our work, in grace, in our nation, in our world, in, and you can fill this in yourself. We are seeking light. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be open. Ask, and it will be given to you. Amen. And so the light of Christ is back in our lives from our Christmas Eve service that didn't happen. So, I miss that. I don't know about you, but I miss that. So let's stand together and sing, Come, Thou Long Expected Jesus. and an usher would come forward and we'll gather a morning offering.
Lord, we come this morning, first of all, grateful that we've uh, begun this new year. And we ask that as we bring our gifts and our offerings, our tithes, and lay them before you this morning, that, that you will know our hearts, that you will know that we come bringing so much more than just our money to put in these plates, that we are bringing our hearts and our lives and recommitting and offering them to you once again in this new year. Amen. Glory be to the Father. So it's been a long time since we've been together. What's God been doing in your life, huh? Besides keeping you warm. He did that first, didn't he? What kind of things have you seen God at work doing over the past few weeks? I was so glad to have my family come the week before Christmas. That we just, I didn't even stick my head out the door except to let the dogs in and out from Thursday to Thursday. <laughs> so it really was kind of a blessing. I was glad for that. So. Rex? I just praise the Lord for last week. I had furnace problems in the morning. It was 12 below. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Of course, nobody told me that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
She hollered, help! <laughs> and immediately, they came to her, their aid. <clears throat> they had already called the ambulance, and, and they put Glenda on the gurney, and he walked out behind her. Hmm. They did tests, and <clears throat> there was no significant injuries, only a slight bone chip on one shoulder that would take care of itself, and she was dismissed. Now it was Ralph's turn, and after his x-rays, etc., he was told that he had a hairline fracture across his hip and would be admitted until the ortho could further analyze the thing to see if surgery was necessary. It was not. Mm -hmm. and he got to go home, just no heavy lifting, and he said, um, I was specifically instructed to not back into any elevator without first looking at it. So oh, praise, praise to God. God. Wow. Oh my goodness, oh, yes. Oh, even one floor. And they're not spring chickens. No. <laughs> wow. Yes. So, thank the Lord. Now I need to have Terry join us up front, please. <laughs> Because we are a week late. <laughs> Terry and Nikki, we just appreciate you two so very much. We are so thankful for you, and we are so blessed to have you. And we know that only through the Lord that you guys are here. And we just thank you so much. And, and we just wanted to give you a little token of our appreciation to Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> our church family, to you guys. You, we love you Mary. are so sweet. Mm -hmm. We, we, uh, you are what keep us going, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. We, uh, last week did not feel like, um, like Christmas to me at all. Because I couldn't and in believe. case you did, I tried to put it on Facebook, but my internet went down. I thought it was ours. Oh, no, it was <laughs> mine. We watched it. We watched it. And then I, you know, I you got it back up and go under it and able to finish it. But <laughs> evidently, our internet at our house is very slow. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Thank you all though so much for all you do for us. You don't have a clue what you do for us. You give us reason and purpose. So. Good. Good. That sounds like a fun evening. It was. Becky. I'll make a report. Uh, Harold uh, Clinker uh, has been having a lot of trouble getting enough air and breathing, and they found out he was his heart choice artery was clogged 80 percent. He said he, Wednesday he had an operation, and it went well, and they found that it was clogged even more than that. Wow! And it had an ulcer, which I said we never heard of mm. on the in the. Artery. Artery. Wow. And so he came out of it fine, and he said right away, I can breathe, so it's much better. Wonderful. So, Wonderful. That's all we know so far. But he did well. Good. Good. Good thing they found that when they did. Yeah. Any other praises? Any, any special prayer concerns we need to lift up? We'll keep Frank on our prayers because he needs to remember to take his medicine and that's easier if he's going to be compliant. <laughs> if he's dragging his feet, he'll forget to take it. This for everybody with the cold oh, yeah. that was going on in, in the world today. Just so, as far as traveling, you just need to be uh, careful. Especially those poor people that still in their port. <laughs> mm -hmm. Trying to Home. They're finally trying, finally beginning to move toward home, so yeah. that's a good thing. Anything else? Okay. Let's go to the Lord then, and we'll just take some time to pray for him, with him. Lord, we're thankful that we can be here. 
very first thing we want to lift up are those of our our family that are not with us this morning. I think of uh, the rest of the Kim family that are so far away from home, and, and yet they are home. And I know that they're excited to be there, but we worry and, and uh, we just pray for them, for their safety and for the ability for them to return to us safely in a, another couple of weeks. We want to lift up Frank, um, admitting that um, we need that medication is always a hard first step. And so we, we just ask that you would help him to, to realize that it's there for his benefit and that, um, that he will do better and uh, it will help every other system in his body if his blood pressure can remain at a better level. So help him to, to see the benefit. We, uh, we think about Harold and his uh, surgery here. Um, we're thankful they were able to, to get that carotid artery open and get him breathing and everything better. And for our friends out west, Lord, I can't imagine um, the, the feeling that they had as they were falling. And to know that your angels were right there to protect them and keep them from being desperately hurt, um, we give you praise and thanks. And we just ask that you would help them both now to... Um, to heal the uh, injuries that they did receive, to heal quickly and simply, and, and that they can uh, tell the world how your presence in their life made the difference. Father, there are, there are many people that are traveling, trying to get back home from uh, holiday travels, holiday places. Some of them or just trying to get back home because they couldn't even get to where they needed to be or had planned to be. So help them, Lord, to uh, get home, get their belongings back home, and that they can begin this new year with a a sense of uh, relief, that they can start fresh, and uh, we'll all be thankful for that here on this New Year's Day. A new start to a new year. Lord, I, I want to pray especially for our United Methodist denomination and, and for every church in that denomination, Lord, that uh, is feeling the, the tension that's going on. And we pray, Lord, that each church will focus their, their attention on you so that they can hear what you're telling them they need to do. So that they can be um, the best church that uh, that you can put together right there in their location. So help us all, Lord. Help us all in this new year. Now, Father, we are your children. We gather as a family each week and And we love one another with that sense of togetherness that only comes when we are children of God. And so we ask that you hear us as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us. Forgive our debts. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Um, Our scripture this morning and for the next two weeks 
is going to be the same little piece of scripture. So take note of it, uh, Matthew 7, uh, 24 through 27. Uh, just um, maybe you could spend a little extra time reading it this week and meditating on it and thinking about it. Um, it's a very short piece of scripture, but it's a piece of scripture I think you're probably pretty familiar with. Um, our, our little three-week series that we're going to um, talk to you about starting this week is focused on three attitudes and habits that will help us prepare for the storms that come along inevitably in our lives. Um, my mom grew up in Oklahoma, and uh, part of living in Oklahoma included knowing what to do in case of a tornado. Uh, schools in most states will have fire drills so that their kids know what to do in case of a fire. Well, in Oklahoma, not only did they have uh, fire drills often, they also had tornado drills so the kids would know what to do whenever there was a tornado in the area. I can remember my mom uh, here in Indiana in the springtime. She would, she would have a, a, almost a sense of when a storm was going to be worse than just a spring storm. She would start gathering things together. She would tell us kids, uh, you, you can't go to the neighbor's house until we see what this storm's going to do. You've got to stay home. Um, she would have a, a, a way of noting the color of the sky and uh, just the pressure, the barometric pressure changes. Uh, she was really in tune to those more even than, and, and tornadoes in Indiana are not unusual, but because she lived right in that main tornado alley in Oklahoma all her growing up years, she was really in tune to that. Now, you know, obviously Oklahoma doesn't have a corner on the storm market. Um, everywhere you find a place to live here in America or even in the world has the potential for storms, for threatening weather and natural disasters. Um, but one thing that um, people that live in those, those storm areas tend to do, they, they take the necessary precautions uh, to be ready whenever there is a storm going to come along. Now, um, you can't live in Oklahoma very long without realizing that there's probably going to be a tornado sooner or later. Just like you can't live in Florida and pretend like there's never going to be any uh, hurricanes or in California like there's never going to be an earthquake or here in Indiana that there's never going to be a 40 below zero wind chill. You know, there's always the potential for disasters, natural disasters like that, wherever you live. But I like the, the term storm ready because it says that we're not just sitting here waiting for a storm to happen. And I think our lives, uh, I think we can uh, apply this same kind of thinking to our lives because... Um, I think we all have lived long enough to understand that um, there are going to be storms of life coming along. Jesus tells us that in Scripture even, that there will be times when life is hard and, and we have storms. So our, our little series that we're going to do um, is short, just three weeks, but it, it's going to talk about um, three... Um, I don't know what you want to call them, three uh, fundamentals that we need to incorporate in our lives, three activities maybe, that will help us be ready for the storms of life that come our way. The piece of scripture that, uh, that we're going to use all three weeks is, is very short. It's from the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Verses 24 through 27. I'll read those for you right now. It says, uh, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. 
The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. The word of God for the people of God. How many of you remember that little song from Bible school or from Sunday school when you were kids? Want to help me sing it? Can you put the words up for it? Okay. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. But I think that's the thing we need to look at when we, when we think about um, how to prepare ourselves for whatever life is going to bring. And, and I want to preface right here before we even get into the meat of this. Um, I think not only does this sermon and this piece of scripture apply to us individually, I think it applies to us as a congregation, as a church too. Because the... Uh, the three basic uh, ideas or, or actions that we are going to talk about today um, not only apply to us personally, but they apply to how we go about being a church that's built on that solid foundation. So, so okay, let's, let, we've played around here long enough. Let's get into it. Um, this piece of scripture... Um, it's going to talk, well, all three weeks, it's going to talk about um, wisdom and obedience and how we uh, must follow Christ's directions if we want to, to build our house on a good foundation and live our life with uh, as much grace as we can when those storms do hit us. And I think the Methodist Church right now is in the midst of one of the biggest storms we've been in for many, many years. So I think we can apply these thoughts to the, the whole mess we're in right there, too. So, um, so let's begin. Wisdom. Wisdom is, is, um, is something that a lot of people have trouble getting a real handle on. What is wisdom? A lot of people think it's just kind of a a vague, unattainable goal. They see wisdom as something that has to do with age and gray hair more than they do anything else. But that's really not what wisdom is all about. Wisdom is just as practical as your daily schedule. And it has nothing to do with age or anything like that. 
So this, the first principle we're going to look at today uh, in this series is how to develop real wisdom. The kind of wisdom that winds up giving us the strength we need to survive the storms of life. Um, the kind of wisdom that we're looking at uh, starts with the, very, the first three things, that the first three rules of real estate. Does anybody know what those are? Location, location, location. That's not just a real estate thing. But think about it. You know, a two-bedroom home uh, near the beach on a, uh, the ocean front down in Southern California is probably going to sell for a whole lot more than that same condo would uh, overlooking a nuclear dump somewhere. The house could be the same, but the location makes all the difference in the price tag. Uh, same way with our lives. When we build our lives, where we build them, where we put our roots down, is so important. We have to build on that strong foundation if we plan on weathering any kind of storm that comes along. If we, if we build our, our life on the thought that, uh, oh, I'm only going to take care of me, I'm only uh, going to do the things that I want to do when I want to do it, and, and uh, I'm going to not worry about anybody else in life, uh, that's kind of the foundation is like quicksand. It'll just melt away whenever the going gets hard. Um, we have to build our lives on something other than what looks like maybe a great location. Um, because after we've lived in one of those beautiful locations for a little while, then we begin to find out that maybe it wasn't quite as nice as we thought it was. And it's the same way with uh, the foundation of our life. If our, if our um, uh, things that are important to us are not grounded in Jesus, then we're going to find out very quickly that life tends to just kind of melt away, just like that sand does underneath a, a foundation. So, um, so where do you, how do you find that good sound foundation? In my book, and of course now you know I'm the preacher and uh, we're standing here in church, so you know, I'm going to tell you the only place, the only place you're going to find a foundation solid enough to build your life on that gives you strength and the ability to weather the life that will be coming your way is when you build your life on Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation. <coughs> oh, excuse me a minute. <coughs> My cough is just because it's dry anymore. With all the furnaces running. <clears throat> See if I can get it to talk again here in a minute. Well, all my cough drops have disappeared. Ah, where do they go? See if I can talk around the cough drop and be able to talk to you this morning. <clears throat> okay. So there are three things. We'll get right to the meat of this. Three things that we can do to help us build a more solid foundation for our life. And kind of daily habits, things that we need to be doing every day. And no matter what your age is, it's never too late to do these things, okay? The first thing we have to learn to do more often than we do right now, probably, is to surrender our life, every day of our life, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of you probably are saying, well, I did that a long time ago. I know I'm saved. I've been baptized, and I, I go to church every Sunday. I know Jesus is my Savior, and that's all very good. But I want you, what I want you to realize <clears throat> is that surrendering your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ is not a something I did back then kind of thing. It's not a, a, a one-time decision. It's an everyday decision. It's a, a commitment that we renew every day, every morning. It should be part of our 
getting up routine. It is turning our life back over to Christ for that day. Every day of your life, we need to make that intentional decision to renew our commitment to Jesus and to surrender to his lordship. Uh, one of my favorite authors is C.S. Lewis. And I want to read a quote that uh, is taken from one of his letters. He said, The real problem of the Christian life comes where people do not usually look for it. It comes the very moment you wake up each morning. All your wishes and hopes for the day rush in at you like a wild animal. And the first job each morning consists simply in shoving them back, in listening to that other voice, taking that other point of view, letting that other, larger, stronger, quieter light come flowing in, and so on all day. You know, building a solid foundation for your life is a process of surrendering your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ over and over and over, every day, all day long. Lord kind of equates to CEO in our life today. Everybody knows what's, that a CEO is the head of the company. Lord means boss. It means that you're willing to allow him to make the executive decisions in your life. It means that, that you know to do just what you want to do, but you find a way to do what he wants you to do. It's a life of surrender and submission. But it's also a life of strength and stability. And it's ours. It's ours right now. All we need to do is act. It's that simple. Surrendering your life, every day of your life, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ is the first habit you need to get into. All of us, every day. The second daily habit is that we need to learn to listen to his word every day for his word every day. Let me say that again. Listen to his word every day for his word every day. I'm kind of talking about spiritual listening here. I'm talking about listening with your heart. It might involve reading. It, it might involve sitting quietly in contemplation. It might involve listening to the Bible being read on your iPod. It might mean uh, listening to a sermon or talking with a spiritual leader. But at the top of the list, that spending time in Scripture as early in the day as possible is one of the most important habits you can make to make your foundation in Christ very secure. Now, just think about it. I don't want you to just head think when you listen to his word. I want you to listen for ways that you can live out his word, do his word. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22, it says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I bet every one of you can uh, name a, a, a religious person that you know that reads the Bible a lot, and they memorize tons of scripture, and they can quote them, and when they do quote them, it's like they're quoting them in all caps. And for some reason, when they quote them, they direct them to somebody else. You know, that that piece of scripture applies to somebody else's life, not their own. Um, some people read the Bible, and they hear only what they think God is telling other people to do. I want you to know, that's not the way the Holy Spirit speaks to you when you're reading Scripture. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, he's not going to be talking about somebody else and how this piece of Scripture fits their life. He's going to be talking to you about how it works in your life. And he challenges each one of us to become a doer of the Word. Building your life on a solid foundation means building your life on a foundation of obedience 
a foundation of doing God's word. That's why Jesus said in our lesson, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them is like a wise man. Every day of our life, every day, we need to listen to his word for his word. Because that word, that word that you're reading, has meaning for you, explicitly for you. And to the, the degree that we say yes to the Holy Spirit's leading, to the degree that we do the word of God, put it into practice, then, then our lives become stronger and more stable. So if you want your life to be storm ready, listen to his word every day, but listen for that special meaning for you. The third thing that will help us build our life on a solid foundation is to make everything you do an act of worship, an act of service. This takes that doing the word to an even deeper level. In the book of Romans, Paul said, Therefore I urge you to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your scriptural act of worship. That phrase, offer your bodies, simply means that every physical action you take, everything you do throughout the day, offer it to God as an act of worship, as, as an act of service. I read a story about an Uber driver. Everybody knows what an Uber driver is, don't you? Kind of like a taxi driver, only driving your own car instead of a taxi. Well, he was an, uh, driving an Uber because his business had gone under and he was um, kind of in between jobs. He was asked how he liked driving for other people. And this was his response. He said, I love it because God uses me every day. Every passenger who gets in the car is one more opportunity to serve God by serving another. With every ride, I have the chance, at the very least, to provide a good service with a good attitude. I have the chance to brighten someone's day because I know that I may be the only uplifting voice they'll hear today. Sometimes I even have the opportunity to talk about spiritual things with a passenger. During the last couple of years, I was so busy worrying about trying to keep my business afloat that I didn't really think about anybody else or anything else. And now, every day, every customer is an opportunity to serve the Lord and to worship Him with my work. Can you imagine what your life would be like if you approached everything you did with that same attitude? When you're at work or when you're talking to your spouse or playing with your grandkids or socializing with your friends? Can you imagine the impact not only on your life but on everybody else's life? If you were to say, you know, this moment isn't all about me. This moment, this activity is an act of worship, an act of service. If that attitude could become a habit in all of our lives, in every area of our life, then our life, our foundation especially, will become stronger and more solid and more secure even when there's a storm on the way. Wisdom is understanding that there are no secular moments in your life. There are no meaningless moments in your life. There are no disposable days. They all matter. Because everything you do all throughout the day is a sacred event. It's an act of worship and it's an act of service. Storm or not, we need that kind of wisdom in our lives. But since we know, and we all do know, that the storms of life are inevitable, we need to make sure that we're ready that our life is built on a solid foundation of wisdom, and that comes from a day-in and day-out, one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. 
Do you want to develop the wisdom of the wise man? Sure. But remember, wisdom has nothing to do with age. It has everything to do with our actions. We all know in our head what really matters in this life. Wisdom takes what we know and does something with it. Wisdom is an everyday thing. And it comes down to this. Wisdom is doing first and doing best that which matters most. Let me say that again. Wisdom is doing first and doing best that which matters most every day of our life. If that becomes our habit, then we're going to be more than wise. We're going to be rock solid and storm ready whenever the storms hit. Since this is the first Sunday of 2023, I think it's a good Sunday for us to recommit our lives individually to the Lordship of Jesus Christ through the act of communion. And so this morning, uh, as we prepare our, our elements for communion, I just invite you to take a moment to silently uh, speak with the Lord, reconnect with Him, and give Him your life so that he can help you build it strong and solid with lots of wisdom. Holy Spirit, we ask you to pour out upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine your Holy Spirit. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for each of us. The blood of Christ poured out for the sins of the world. The new covenant is here. As you're ready, please come to the table. Come and, and recommit to building a stronger foundation with the Lord this year.
you pray with me? Lord, we as individuals, we want to build our life on your strength. Help us to do that even more this year than ever before. And as a church, we want to do exactly what you want us to do, what's best for the world that's around us. And so, Lord, we build our church upon your strong foundation of truth and love, of light in a world of darkness, of grace. And we go this morning into that world, taking your love and your light to those around us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and join in our closing hymn this morning, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. blow this light out, but each one of you carries that light within you, and that light is to be shed with the world around you. So go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and show the light, let it shine through you. Amen. Mm -hmm.